Hey guys, it's Kylie. Welcome to another episode of Touch the Sky, helping you reach your full potential. Last episode, when I asked you guys just casually, hey, would anyone like a, a video where I share some of the, the tips and, and, and tactics that I have when contacting brands, getting funding, getting sponsored? So many people replied. I was really quite surprised at how much interest there was in this topic. You might be thinking, why should I listen to you? I have no idea who you are. You're this crazy girl with a crazy hat. By the way, that's my mom. She said, if you're going to be filming on the beach for now, please wear a hat and don't get sunburned. Um, yes, that's a valid question. If you're famous, if you have a big social media following, it's not that hard to get brands to have a conversation with you. They, in fact, they line up, they contact you. But if you're in the position, like I have been, uh, where you're not necessarily uh, well known in your industry, you have great ideas, you have good work, but you want to take it to the next level, it's quite a challenge and you've got to be quite strategic in, in how you get through those gatekeepers to even get your, your email replied to or opened. <laughs> if you're also saying, uh, well, it's easy for you, you're a girl or, or you, know, you look a certain way. Every single pitch I've done in the last 10 years has started with an email. It is the great democratizer. It's just as hard for all of us. Doesn't matter how many contacts or how much money you have or what you look like. You've really got to be able to persuade someone with that, that just that one paragraph and I'm going to help you do that. I certainly don't think that I've made it. I say this all the time, but I, I really, I really don't. But I tell you what, I have uh, accomplished a lot of things that people say to me, how did you do that when you don't have a million followers on Instagram? Or Kylie, how did you get a meeting with that huge global brand when uh, everybody is going after that brand? And I'm talking about brands like, uh, you know, the drone company DJI, Adobe I've worked with, uh, HP I've worked with, Airbnb, Bulgari, a lot of like luxury brands, a lot of luxury hotels all over the world. Do you know what else? I, I just feel like these days, whatever industry you're in, pitching is by far the most transferable skill. You can be the most creative genius in the world, you can have the most innovative concepts, but if you don't have the ability to sell that idea, to persuade people to come on board your team, be that uh, employees as you grow or uh, an investor or any kind of business partner, then, then you're never going to be able to take your, your business to the next level. Let's get started. Here it is, my seven tips for pitching to a brand. Stalk your CMO. What is a CMO? That is a chief marketing officer. Okay, first of all, understand your marketing team. You have the chief marketing officer underneath that. You've got uh, brand directors or brand managers. So oftentimes look at who like the, the parent brand is and then look at the subsidiary brands. Make sure you're getting through to the right person. I cannot stress how important this is or how much sun is ruining my shot right now. If you're going to all this trouble and you're getting through to someone who doesn't have the authority to sign off on budget or to authorize any partnerships. What a tragedy. That's a sad story. It's a tragedy. It's a waste of your time, so do your research. People say to me, oh yeah, but how do I know who's the right person to contact? Look for it, it's all out there. Don't waste your time on their Facebook page, their Twitter feed, any of that, even sometimes their website. Look for their corporate website, okay? If their team is not listed there, you need to go deeper. Marketing directors, they want to hide from people like you and me, understandably so. They are being chased by so many people every single day, so they don't put out their email address. That's fine, we're gonna find them anyway. You know how you do this? The time that marketing directors do want to be in the spotlight is when they're talking about some great campaign that they just did that went really well or some award that they won at you know, Can Lions or something, one of these advertising and marketing uh, awards uh, festivals. So look for press releases. Now you'll find these either on the corporate site, they have a part like buried deep in a, in a part of their corporate website and, uh, and you'll see that the pull quote is always from the marketing director, the one who has the most authority. It's not going to be like Jan the intern says they're all really proud of how this campaign performed. No, it's going to be the head honcho and that is the person that you need to get to and then once you have a name, then we take it to the next level. Okay, what's the next level? 
you need to look for the person that they're not worried about uh, you getting through to and they will have their email listed somewhere on the corporate site okay once you get that email format input the marketers name into that same email format another tactic i came up with is to look to trade magazines type in the words marketing magazine the brand's name this year or the year before and the word appointed because generally they will say so and so has been appointed as the new marketing director or brand manager but it will only make the trade press invariably they're going to have one uh, agency that looks after their events another one who looks after their digital so for example if you're pitching a web series make sure you understand which agency is looking after that particular channel honestly it's not ideal going to the PR agency or the, the advertising agency because they've got their own ideas that they're trying to pitch and the last thing they want is another person coming in uh, to to take a little bit of the budget the next thing is we're gonna head to Twitter okay you're not gonna spam the marketing director with with like begging, pleading, sycophantic tweets. No, don't do that. And don't go to their Instagram. I think that Instagram is more of a personal space, but Twitter is used for business, so they expect it. The thing is though, I use Twitter to really prep myself and understand what type of marketing director are they. Who knows anything about that guy? No one's ever lifted that rock. He could be Batman for all we know. You probably know more about him than I do. What is their sense of humor? If, for example, you can see that they're always joking around, perhaps you can uh, adopt a little bit more of an informal tone when you're writing an email. Because if you do make it to the stage where you are face to face with them or you are on a call, it helps you to be able to relate to them as a person, not just as like the answer to all your financial dreams. I mean, you have to kind of get that out of your head. They have to measure every single decision and, and be accountable for it. You can't be this person who's like inundating them saying, ah, you know, give me free product, sponsor my trip, this adventure, because it's going to be amazing. No, you need to be the solution to their problems. And so identify what their problems are. And believe me, in this fragmented landscape, the way things are at the moment, every brand has problems. Every brand has a fear that they're going to become irrelevant to their, to their customers customers to their viewers agencies are scared of us and you know why you have an authentic backstory you're more nimble more flexible uh, you're cheaper hands down so I mean you you really do have the edge okay think about it where are marketing professionals they are mostly stuck in a lot of internal meetings or they're out at trade conferences or awards uh, festivals uh, in different countries usually. So when you're on Twitter, if you see that they're about to attend it or if you see that they're actually there, don't send your email then. It is going to get buried, lost forever, okay? They can't even deal with the people who are important, who they should be getting back to, who they work with, let alone you. Number two. Gentlemen, before you leave, can I just say something? We are living in a very, very exciting time. There is, there is no excuse for complaining because you know what? Like 10, 20 years ago, you wouldn't have been able to do this. The thing is though, you're still competing against agencies, advertising agencies. And so if you want to play at that level, you have to become like an agency. You have to think like one. You can do it. I believe in you. I've done it and I never had uh, contacts or a lot of money. Do you want the bad news or the good news? Bad news first and then we'll treat ourselves with the good news, okay? Okay. Bad news first, it's really tough. It is a numbers game. The world is full of talented, proactive people. If you are even slightly lazy, or if you're not gonna commit to this like 200%, you're not going to survive. You're really not. It's, there's a lot of rejection. There's a lot of work with no guarantee of any results or any rewards. And uh, you've really got to become comfortable with that. The, the feeling that you get when you see that response in your inbox and they say, sounds really interesting, we'd love to chat, when can we have a call? I'm telling you, it is thrilling. It is, it is just as good as you imagine it will feel. I get a lot of people sending me emails saying, ah, oh, Kylie, I contacted this brand, but I just never heard back from them. Really, how did you contact them? I mean, think like an agency. I do have an advertising and marketing background and I've interviewed marketing directors all over the world for a, a magazine I was editor of. And I can tell you, when a, when a brand is gonna do a campaign, you know, they put it out to tender to multiple agencies and these agencies are teams of people who work for months 
just for for that that 10 minutes in a boardroom when they can pitch you've got to think like that before an agency sits down with a brand they research that brand thoroughly and this is what I always do I mean I'm talking like going back years I go back about I don't know 10 years and look at all of their marketing campaigns it's all online you can find it what taglines have they used when the tagline changed why was that did they have some sort of PR crisis uh, did the marketing director change and how did that did that person change the tone perhaps of the brand what are their competitors doing did their competitors start doing video for example and then you can say okay right so they're clearly going to be a bit nervous so I'm gonna to suggest to them that I can be that solution you might be saving yourself so much time and energy because it doesn't matter how good your idea is it matters how tailored it is to their needs so you might be pitching this wonderful idea uh, going to families and they've just had a meeting three years ago and said do you know what families are not really uh, working for us we're really gonna focus now just more on women or the single market it just really helps with making you appear more professional because you have that awareness of their brand heritage you know more about me than anyone Don't promise preview. What do I mean by this? You can't tell them, ah, you know, I've got this idea and it could look like this and I was thinking it could be like that and no, I mean, you need to show them proof. You must stand out from the crowd. Often before I've even had any contact with the brand, once I've done my research, I will then create something, a preview. It just needs to be 30 seconds. In fact, it shouldn't really be over a minute. Uh, just to show them a little taste of what my idea could be and how well I understand their tone, their brand, their challenges, right? So you also want to show them the quality of your work. You can find videographers quite cheap these days to, to help you film something if you don't know how to do it yourself. And you know what the other thing is? They are tired. If you can click on a link, to a video, it is so much more compelling just because you want a break. You don't even have to be in the video, but maybe if you just have something visual, marketers aren't always creative people. They're not always imaginative. I, I've often had it where I've said, oh, it's gonna look like this, and like that, and they're like, oh, I can't really picture it. And then when I show them a video, they're like, wow, I, I, I'm in tears, I have goosebumps. There was a crab just crawling on my foot, oh my gosh. <laughs> It is tough though, if you go to that much trouble, it's a lot of investment of your time, of your energy, and when they don't even reply, and they haven't even asked for it, you know, it's unsolicited, it, 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 can, really, it can really be like this, this kick in the guts. The chances are the answer is either going to be they ignore you or they say no. You've got to be able to deal with that. Being with a client is like being in a marriage. Sometimes you get into it for the wrong reasons and eventually they hit you in the face. It's part of the hustle and this is why it kind of frustrates me when people say, oh, nice for you, you got sponsored. It is hard work. I work for years. I've had it where I've worked on something, a pitch for nine months. They fly me out to the head office in their country. I sit there, I hear them all get very excited about it and then suddenly they say there's been a, a new marketing director come into the, into the team and uh, the whole thing's cancelled. You've got to be able to deal with that can you handle that I don't know <laughs> I mean this is blood sweat tears and not only is there a possibility that you won't get paid there's a possibility you will have this crushing rejection that will like send you down into these depths of depression but you got to be strong it's worth it come on this is your dream isn't it worth fighting for I think it is and I think the exposure is going crazy at the same time because this Sun just keeps changing with the clouds Okay, let's move on. 10, 10 seconds. That's all they're going to give you when they open up your email. So I know you have an amazing backstory and all these credentials and like this, you want to put your whole CV and everything. No, like they're not going to click into your CV. They're going to give you 10 seconds when they first open your email. And if you can't communicate who you are, why you're valuable, what your idea is in that 10 seconds, in one paragraph, in a few sentences, then your idea isn't developed enough. You need to go back to the drawing board and come up with an idea and a way of communicating it that is clear and concise and compelling. It's hard to put into words. Then you have failed. You're thinking, this might be the only chance I have to communicate it, and if they don't like that idea, I want to give them this idea, and I just want to cover all bases. No, you're at risk there of just 
like honestly having them shut off before they've even read anything because they see this huge big long block of text a short email really communicates confidence when you write a big long email it's like you're this very desperate sort of salesman just like spewing out all this information you don't want to come off like that and by the way I mean it is different a lot of you write me these big long emails and, and tell me these very intimate stories that's different because you're not pitching to me you're just sharing some beautiful stories and I love that but I think when you're in this kind of sales role concision is key she says after having been super verbose and gone on forever but I I'm sorry I'm just I'm just passionate and I really want to help you Honestly, no matter what kind of industry you're in, if you're trying to open a restaurant or if you're pitching your portfolio as a photographer, they're going to look you up online. And are you ready for that, okay? Have a website. You can build it yourself for free on WordPress. I've built like about three websites on my own. I didn't know what I was doing in the beginning and you just research it. Go out and find, there are forums, work it out yourself. Don't put at the end of your email, oh, you know, I have work, but it's not online yet. Or I have my website, but it's not up to date. Or I'm about to launch my website. No, why are you even contacting them if you haven't launched your website yet? <laughs> Rejection sucks. It is so awful. It just hits you right here. It like wins you and you just lie there on the couch just thinking, why am I even bothering? This is never ever going to happen. What was I thinking contacting that big global brand? Like, but please don't let yourself spiral into self-pity. Self-pity is just such a time waster. And do you know what else? The next person that you go to have a meeting with or to pitch to, they can smell it, they can sense it, they can sense your desperation, your cynicism, the fact that you're just kind of a little bit bitter with the world. I know that it's hard, my gosh, like, do you know how many times, how many projects, like, I must have a hundred pitch videos from brands that I've pitched to, whether it be a book or a TV show or whatever, but you just have to treat yourself like an athlete and get better at just shaking it off starting afresh and saying you know what that's fine go and look up and there are so many out there the number of stories of people who it's just like a no 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 until it's a yes you only need one person to say yes even if it's not the amount of funding or sponsorship that you need, it's enough to set you on a new trajectory. And then once you have one sponsor on, it's infinitely easier to go to other people and start getting them to come on board. pitch in person okay so nobody's responding to your emails you're getting a little bit angry uh, and defeated don't worry we just got to change our tack there's always a way you just got to think laterally maybe they're they're speaking at an event oftentimes marketers are on a lot of panels so I will I will go to these events and sometimes I can't afford a ticket so I will just wait outside the event or be around the general <laughs> vicinity like in the cafe across the road if you get the chance it's going to be intimidating don't pitch them on the spot there because that's just gonna be embarrassing and awkward for everyone what you need to do is just leave an impression tell them your name tell them what you do and ask them if you might be able to send them an email you're gonna to want to go up to them and just be like yeah I love your brand I've got this money, I've got this project and this is how it's gonna work no Whew, stop that have some self-respect okay. you've got something valuable to offer okay so you don't have to just like spew it all out in front of them if any of this was useful give this video a thumbs up leave me a comment tell me what kind of you know things you are pitching so I can uh, tailor this to your to your needs and uh, thank you so much for watching stay stay positive I know it's hard but you can do this I believe you can